In the previous episode, we talked about resources. We focused on CPU and memory and learned how important it is to configure the resources in our Kafka cluster. But uh, CPU and memory are not the only resources to be worried about. For example, the network or disk I.O. are another resources uh, which are used very intensively by Kafka and we need to take care of them. If you deploy your Kafka cluster just like that, its pods will be scheduled to one of the worker nodes with free capacity as any other application. And it will most probably share the node with many other pods. So if your Kafka pods are scheduled to the same Kubernetes nodes with some other applications, which use network or disk IO heavily, it can lead to some problems. And there are also many other shared resources which can cause similar issues, such as different uh, cache memories and so on. So how can we avoid it? One way would be to set up dedicated nodes for your Kafka brokers. The dedicated nodes will of course still need to run the Kubernetes components such as kubelet or kubeproxy, and they will also need to run additional system components such as uh, FluentD to collect logs or for example some networking and monitoring. But from regular applications, only Kafka will be allowed to schedule there. All other applications will be scheduled to other worker nodes which are not dedicated to Kafka. That way, we isolate Kafka from other applications and make sure that it will not have to fight for disk, network, or any other resources with other applications. So, how do we set up dedicated nodes? We first have to taint the selected nodes we want to dedicate for Kafka. The taint will make sure that regular pods will not be scheduled on these nodes. Only pods which are configured to tolerate this taint will be allowed to schedule there by Kubernetes. So with the taint, we make sure that no other apps than Kafka will run there. But we will also need to make sure that the Kafka pods really get scheduled on these nodes and not somewhere else. For that, we will also need to label these nodes with some labels, which we can later use for node affinity in the Kafka pods. With the taints and labels set, we should have the dedicated nodes ready. But one thing to keep in mind is that tainting the nodes will not drain them. So if you decide to dedicate for Kafka some nodes which already were running some other apps, you will need to make sure that these apps are moved to other nodes. We now need to configure Kafka to use these dedicated nodes. We need to configure the tolerations for the taint, which will allow Kafka pods to run on the dedicated nodes. And we also need to configure the node affinity which match the labels we created to make sure that the Kafka pods will actually be scheduled on these nodes and not run somewhere else. And we will of course do that in the Streamsy custom resource. I have my Kubernetes cluster already running and uh, we can have a look at the nodes and we will see that I have uh, three different master nodes and six different worker nodes. And now I can uh, select some of these nodes and use them as the dedicated nodes. So first I have to taint them. So kubectl taint node. Now I will select one of the nodes and now I will specify the taint, which in my case is dedicated equals Kafka with the effect no schedule. And you can see that the node has been tainted. And uh, because my Kafka cluster has three brokers, uh, I really need to taint three of the nodes and uh, because my cluster is running in three different uh, zones, it's important that I pick the dedicated nodes from each of the zones so that the Kafka brokers running on them uh, run in all the different zones as well. So now I have three of the nodes uh, with the tains, and now I can do the same for the labels. So I can do kubectl label node. Now it's important that I label exactly the same nodes uh, where I configured the taints. And so this is the first node. Now uh, the second node, I'm really just uh, copying the node names because that's a bit easier. And now the third node. And that's it. Now I have the dedicated nodes set up. So these three nodes, which we 
tainted and labeled will be used as dedicated for Kafka only and all I need to do now is configure in uh, Kafka the tolerations and node affinity in the tolerations I will specify that the Kafka broker pods should uh, tolerate the taint which says dedicated uh, equals Kafka with effect no schedule and in node affinity I will say that the nodes are required to schedule on nodes which have the label dedicated with the value Kafka and uh, if you want your zookeeper nodes to run on the dedicated uh, workers as well you can also do the same for uh, the zookeeper nodes and uh, you can really configure this also for the operators but the operators they are also completely fine to run on the regular nodes and share them with our applications so uh, it's not really needed to run them on the dedicated nodes the dedicated nodes are great and offer very good isolation from other workloads but dedicating several nodes just for Kafka usually means quite a lot of resources it is not unusual to have big Kafka clusters with hundreds of gigs of memory and many CPUs which can make use of the dedicated nodes but not every Kafka cluster is that big so what can you do when your Kafka cluster is too small and using dedicated nodes makes no sense? Well, we can at least try to control which applications will get scheduled on the shared worker node with the Kafka pods. We can use pod affinity and anti-affinity to tell Kubernetes which pods should or should not be scheduled on the same worker nodes with our Kafka pods. We first need to try to identify the applications which utilize similar resources as Kafka. Typically, these can be things such as databases, storage apps, or uh, maybe other messaging software. Once we identify them, we can configure the pod anti-affinity rules to make sure these apps are never scheduled on the same nodes. That way, we can make sure that they will not fight for the resources such as disk or network. The affinity is useful also for other things. If your Kubernetes cluster has different types of worker nodes, you can use it to make sure that the Kafka pods run on the right type of nodes. For example, the nodes with better network or storage performance will be also better for Kafka. The pod anti-affinity and node affinity rules can of course be combined. So you can easily specify both of them together. Configuring the affinity is done in the Kafka custom resource. In the template section, you can specify all the different affinity rules which should be applied to the Kafka, Zookeeper or any other pod. In the example here, we have two types of affinity configured here. We have the pod anti-affinity where we specify that when the Kafka brokers will be scheduled, they should be scheduled on a different node than any existing pods running which have the label workload containing one of the following values, database, messaging or storage what is important is this topology key which is set to kubernetes io slash host name which defines that the pods should be running on a different host names i have here also node affinity where i specify that the, the kafka broker pods should be running on nodes which uh, have the label type set to value good network which uh, in my case should indicate that that's some special type of the hosts which have better networking the actual labels in your case might be different and uh, uh, if needed you should consult your cluster administrators to see what are the right labels you should use and uh, maybe in case of the workload labels you will actually need to make sure that all the applications have some proper labels which you can use for this because by default it's possible that they won't have uh, any labels. So that were dedicated nodes and affinity. Two options how to improve your production Kafka setup. You can choose which one fits better for your cluster and for your environment. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Twitter to make sure you don't miss the next episodes or any of our other Stromzy content.